I reviewed a DAC by the French manufacturer Atoll Electronique almost six years ago and I liked it. This time a streamer, DAC and preamp in one, the MS120. Products by Atoll Electronique are easily identifiable, both outside and in. Outside the 3D logo and the front plate round corners are typical at all. Inside I recognize the multiple power supplies, discrete analog electronics and high quality capacitors. As said the MS120 is a network player, streamer if you like and a DAC. Since it can switch between inputs and has a volume control, it can be connected directly to a power amp and thus function as a preamp. I use the MS120 as a network player and DAC. Here's how that works. You need an amplifier with loudspeakers attached. The MS120 is connected to the CD or AUX input on the amp over a pair of RCA cables. There also needs to be a network connection over either a network cable or Wi-Fi to your router to play music from internet sources. Like streaming from Tidal, Cobus or Deezer or from internet radio stations. To play music from your computer or NAS, these need to be connected to your network too and have a DNLA or UPnP server program running. Music can be selected from the front panel or infrared remote control using the NICE TFT display. Alternatively, you can download the Atoll Signature app and use a smartphone or tablet for control. Or send music from your smartphone, tablet or computer over Bluetooth of course with the quality limitations of Bluetooth. Other analog or digital sources can be connected too. If you, for instance, like to play CDs as well, hook up a CD player over either SPDIF, TOSLINK or analog RCAs. Connecting the TV over TOSLINK or mini jack to RCA cable is no problem either. You can also connect a USB drive containing music to either the USB socket on the front or the rear and play directly from that. The MS120 has a black or silver aluminium front and a metal cabinet. It measures 320 by 230 by 94 mm and weighs 3 kilos. The first thing that attracts your attention is the high quality 5 inch TFT color display. That shows the menus and when playing music the metadata and cover art. To the right of it the menu navigation keys with below it the headphone output on mini jack and to the right the standby button. On the left the plus and minus volume buttons with below it a USB A socket to connect the storage medium to. Handy if your friends bring a new album on USB memory stick. On the rear we find a power switch, the IEC mains inlet, a second USB A socket for storage media and the network socket. Two screw on sockets for the supplied Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas look like being placed as an afterthought. Then two SPDIF digital inputs and two TOSLINK digital inputs. Below it a 12 volt trigger output that can for instance switch on a power amplifier when you use the MS120 as a preamp too. Digital outputs are available on both SPDIF and TOSLINK. Then two stereo analog inputs and the left and right analog outputs. Not too many network players in this price category come with such a comprehensive remote control. Probably because often the smartphone or tablet will be used. But there will be a group of buyers that prefer this remote, especially since it lets you select inputs and even set or delete favorite stations or tracks. As said, Atoll does care about properly powering audio equipment. In the MS120 we find two switch mode power supply modules delivering 5 volts 4.5 watts, a transformer delivering 12 volts 1.6 VA and a transformer delivering 2 times 24 volts 2.3 VA. Left of it the rectifiers and capacitors to convert the AC from the transformers into DC and buffer it. System control is done by this microchip processor while the complete digital I.O. is placed on this board using the usual Cirrus Logic chips. 
The Stream Unlimited A10 streamer module is mounted piggyback on it. Choosing for the ready-to-use Stream Unlimited modules is a trusted way to add streaming to an audio device. The module comes with Ethernet, dual band Wi-Fi, UPnP, DNLA and Bluetooth. Close to it we find the Burr Brown PCM1796 DAC chip that here does 24-bit 192 kHz PCM and DSD128. It all doesn't use the digital filtering algorithms in the DAC chip. Instead it uses its own filter design and or presumably filters provided by MQA since MQA decoding and rendering is also offered. Directly next to the Burr Brown chip is the voltage regulator that powers it. The other typical atoll approach to audio is to use discrete components for amplification, like here for the headphones output. The separated line output circuits are also discreetly built, symmetrically placed and feedback free. They hold very nice metallized polypropylene film capacitors. The 2.94 volts output level is 3.34 dB above Redbook specs. This will be no problem as long as you don't use a 70s or earlier vintage amp. But you need to take the higher voltage level into account when comparing the MS120 to another network player or CD player. Then some remarkable measurements. THD plus noise shows somewhat higher distortion products, especially the 2K1 at minus 78 dB, but since it's a second harmonic it might color the sound somewhat warm, if at all. Then linearity. It is excellent down to 107 dB, after which it is lost. I especially mention it here since it's hard to say what effect it has on the sound quality. Far more interesting is the high detail to power supply in this design for that will have a profound effect on things like jitter and thus time resolution. The same goes for the discrete audio circuits. I have to mention that the measurements decrease a bit when using the MS120 as a preamp too. As said, you can use the MS120 as a streaming DAC or as a streaming DAC and preamp. In that case the analog inputs will remain in the analog domain. I used it in the streaming DAC mode by switching off the volume control. This is easily done by pressing both volume buttons simultaneously for 5 seconds. Navigating the menu for input selection, music selection on the USB, DNA or UPnP server, Cobus, Tidal or Deezer is easily done using the large display and the navigation buttons on the front. Alternatively, the included infrared remote control or the Atoll Signature app can be used. This app is available for Android, iOS and iPadOS. On the iPad it looks like this. In the left column we find all sources being it streaming, analog inputs or digital inputs. The right side shows the music played with along the bottom the volume control, here disabled. The settings menu is clear and actually hardly necessary. The MS120 connected to my network immediately thanks to UPnP. It found my DNA service after only a few minutes. I'll show you by selecting media server. Usually only one server will show up, but my network is usually full with devices that consider themselves to be a server. I select the Sin8 NAS, Music, Artist, P and Philharmonia Orchestra directed by Giuseppe Sinopoli. The music starts to play and the metadata plus cover art is shown. When an MQA track is played, this is shown in the metadata field like here. As with all DNA and UPnP AV players, the speed of the menus depend on the speed of the computer or NAS the DNA or UPnP AV server is running on, plus the number of tracks your catalog has. Like most modern network players, the MS120 is able to play albums gaplessly. The MS120 was reviewed in my reference setup too, where the Marantz KI Pearl Light drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers over Kimber 4PI loudspeaker cable. 
They are supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. The Atoll MS120 was connected to the amp over the no longer available Siltec London RCAs and to the network over the AQ switch using a CAT6 patch cable. The MS120 sounds up front, direct and dynamic. The stereo image is not too deep, but focusing is typical for this price range. Remarkably good is how well sibilance is reproduced. Both the original release of Famous Blue Raincoat by Jennifer Warnes and Urk by The Nits sounded almost free or sharp S sounds. Sound quality wise I categorize the MS120 in my reference setup to about 80% of what is achievable. For the same money you could get a Denafrips Aries 2 plus Raspberry Pi streamer. The sound quality you can achieve with this combination might be a tad higher, but it comes at the expense of versatility, ease of use and connectivity, let alone the super usability of navigating with the display menu. Also the app is pleasant to use once you get the hang of it, which by the way goes for about every software. The Dutch MSRP is 1350 euros, which is a fair price for what is offered. Which brings us to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It's much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on thehbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.